Hi everyone, in today's video, I am going to be talking about the use of reflective journal log in qualitative research. Before I get into its advantages and disadvantages and when is it used, let me first explain what is a reflective journal log. A reflective journal log is when a researcher, especially in qualitative research, write down, writes down uh, his or her thoughts uh, what they observe, um, what have they noticed if they have participated in an activity, um, what have they really learned from the process of data collection and data analysis. It is usually written as a first person account of the researcher. The reason a reflective journal log is used is that it is part of the data collection and also the analysis process. You can also justify it in the research design process because it adds to the rigor of the data collection and the data analysis. What this shows the examiners and the reviewers or the readers is that the researcher is himself or herself acknowledging the biases and the presumptions as well as the assumptions they came with before data was collected and analyzed. What did they learn during that process? and how did they arrive at certain conclusions and findings. So the whole scientific method behind arriving at those conclusions and findings is explained. Let me give you an example. Let's say you as a researcher are trying to understand the effect that people speaking in English have on Russian students. So you use people who speak English with different accents and try to gauge the understanding of the Russian students based on how they comprehend the accent of different English speakers. Now maybe an assumption that you came with was that the Russians will find understanding the English of the Americans, the British, the Australian, the traditional English speakers very easily. Whereas they might struggle with the accents of the Asian speakers, people from China or India or any other countries. Now during the research process, you realize that no, it is the other way around. So here is where your assumption was addressed. So if you employed less of the Americans and British and Australians because you assumed that it will be easy to understand and you focused more on the Asian countries and you employed uh, more lecturers or teachers from the Asian countries to study the impact of the Asian speakers or the impact of the English speaking ability of Asian speakers and the effect of it on the comprehension of the Russian students, then you can show or you can say that this was a presumption or an assumption you came with. However, when you found that it is the traditional English speakers who are more difficult to comprehend for the Russian students, you change the research design and you also started looking into more of traditional English speakers like maybe the Irish or the Scottish and you started to see the effect of their accent on the Russian students. So during the data collection process itself, you are showing how you as a researcher came with certain presumptions, how you discovered those presumptions were wrong or how you addressed it, how you improved on it to also improve the data collection process and then you analyze the data. Your findings are based on the analysis of the data and throughout this time you were keeping a reflective journal log which can be reviewed by the examiners, by the reviewers or even by the readers to see what was the change in the process or the process of your change in your thought uh, as a scientist. So how this helps is that your biases and your uh, assumptions or presumptions are addressed by you. So instead of just claiming that your research data was not affected by any of your bias, you are actually showing to the reader or the examiner or the reviewer how you went about addressing it. It's more scientific in nature. So you write it in first person basis. You use it mainly for qualitative uh, data analysis. You use it to note down any thoughts, any thinking process. So you engage in high order critical thinking. So this also shows the examiners and the reviewers how you engaged in higher order critical thinking which is a must for any kind of research paper or research writing or even a PhD thesis. 
So this is the use of a reflective journal log. You should attach it along with your um, other data analysis documents as part of your thesis or as extracts of it for publication if there are any page limits. But the focus or the idea behind it is for you to be able to show what was your growth as a researcher. How did you address the biases as a researcher? Because it should contribute towards your data collection analysis. It should not merely be thoughts that were jotted down. It can be in the rough draft when you put it in the final draft. It should make sense to the reviewers or examiners. It should show a, a, a clear a pattern of your thinking. It should show uh, what kind of growth was achieved. It should be logically presented, scientifically presented to improve your standing as a researcher, to add rigor to your findings, your data collection and the analysis process and uh, also uh, helps to validate your findings as to how you arrived at it and what scientific method was used. I hope uh, this was a useful video for you to understand reflective journal law. Uh, it is often overlooked by many qualitative researchers, but I strongly recommend uh, students to use it because uh, many students feel that this is just part of the triangulation of the data collection process because you are trying to show that uh, yes, apart from observation or video recordings or interviews or surveys, I have also added this but it should only be used when it can be used as a way to contribute towards the data collection analysis. Otherwise, it's just some documents and if the examiners and reviewers cannot make sense of it, then it is of no use to it. It is just another additional document which is not contributing, which is not adding value to your thesis. So think of it that you may make rough notes that when you present it in your thesis, it should be presented in a logical way which should make sense, which should add value. That is how you have to think about it. So let me know if there are any questions or comments in the comment section below. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye for now.